Hello, and welcome to the ArcServe Unified Data Protection Appliance Wizard video. In this video, I'll show you how to set up the UDP appliance. OK, let's get started. Each ArcServe UDP 7000 series appliance is a self-contained, set-and-forget backup and recovery solution. The ArcServe UDP 7000 series is the first complete and most cost-effective data protection appliance, featuring assured recovery, architected with cloud-native capabilities, its unmatched ease of deployment, and usability combined with a broad set of features such as global source-based deduplication, multi-site replication, tape support, and automated data recovery capabilities. The ArcServe UDP 7000 series delivers unmatched operational agility and efficiency and truly simplifies disaster recovery activities. First, turn on the power to the appliance and the UDP End User License Agreement dialog opens. You'll have to read and accept the agreement in order to continue. After you accept it, the Welcome to the ArcServe UDP 7000 Series Appliance Configuration Tool screen opens. Assign a host name to the appliance, and then configure the network ports. Assigning a name helps identify the appliance on your network. To make your appliance a member of a domain in your network, Click the Add This ArcServe UDP Appliance to a Domain option. Then specify the domain, username, and password. Click Save and the dialog to configure your network connections open. Please note that when you apply for a new host name, you need to restart the appliance. You can select to reboot the appliance now or after you complete configuring the network settings. After you reboot the appliance, you can then access the appliance from any other machine by using the following URL. By default, ArcServe UDP discovers all connections in a network. If some connections are not assigned, you'll have to manually edit it and specify the connection details. To edit a network connection, click Edit in the Network Connections box. The Network Connection dialog opens. Specify the type of network connection. You can select Use DHCP to obtain IP address automatically or obtain DNS server address automatically. Then specify the corresponding fields and then click Save. Optionally, you can also modify the host name and domain and date and time fields. To apply the changes, click Reboot to restart the appliance with the new host name. After the appliance restarts with the new host name, the Unified Data Protection Wizard opens to the ArcServe UDP Appliance Management screen. This wizard lets you create a basic plan to schedule backups. A plan is a collection of steps that define what nodes to backup and when to perform the backup. The backup destination is the appliance server. In addition to a basic plan, ArcServe UDP lets you create complex plans and control many parameters from the UDP console. For more information on this, please see the ArcServe UDP Solutions Guide. Now from this screen, you can manage the UDP console either as a standalone instance, or you can manage it remotely from another UDP console. Then click Next. The Data Stores dialog opens. A data store is a physical storage area on the appliance and can be used as the destination for your backups. By default, ArcServe UDP creates a data store called hostname underscore data underscore store. This data store is deduplication and encryption enabled. For more information about deduplication and encryption, search for data deduplication from our ArcServe UDP Solutions Guide. Because this data store is encrypted, you'll also need to provide and confirm an encryption password. Then click Next. The Email and Alerts dialog opens. This dialog lets you define the email server that will be used to send alerts and the recipients who would get the alerts. From the screen, you can specify the email notification settings and the types of alert notifications you want to receive. You can select options to get alerts based upon successful jobs, failed jobs, or both. Check the Email Service Requires Authentication checkbox to specify whether the email server requires authentication. If selected, you would then need to specify the account name and password required for authentication. Select the options to specify the encryption method to use for the communication channel. If you check the Connect Using a Proxy Server option, 
the proxy settings button becomes enabled so that you can specify the proxy server, username, and port number if you're connecting to the mail server through a proxy server. Also, specify username and password if the proxy server requires authentication. Click the Send a Test Email button to send a test mail to the recipients to verify you have the correct details. After completing the screen, then you click Next. The Replication to Remote RPS dialog opens. From the screen, you can specify the details about replicating to a remotely managed recovery point server, or RPS. Again, like the previous screen, if you check the Connect using a proxy server option, it will enable the proxy settings button so that you can then specify the proxy server username and port number if you are connecting to the remote console through a proxy server. If you don't want the appliance to replicate to remotely managed RPS, then select the second option and then click Next. The Create a Plan dialog opens. This screen lets you create a basic plan from where you can specify the nodes that you want to protect in the backup schedule. If you do not want to create a plan through the wizard at this time, you can click the Skip Plan Creation button and you'll be sent to the last dialog of the wizard, which is the Next Steps dialog. And from the Next Steps dialog, you would just click Finish and the UDP console opens to allow you to create your plans through the console. But for this video, let's assume that we want to create a plan through the wizard. So back on the Create a Plan dialog, you would specify the plan name, session password, and then confirm the password. Then you would have to specify the method on how you would want to add the nodes to the plan. The available methods in this drop-down field are hostname IP address for Windows machines only, discovering nodes from Active Directory, importing from vCenter ESX, or importing from Hyper-V. Depending on the method you select, the corresponding dialog appears. So let's take a closer look at each of these options. Use the add nodes by hostname IP address method to add one or more nodes. Simply enter the host name, IP address, username, password, and description. Then click Add to List, and the node name will then be displayed in the nodes protected by plan list. To add more nodes, perform these steps again. Click Next, and the nodes are added to the plan. Use the Add Nodes by Active Directory method to add nodes that are in an active directory. You first need to discover the nodes by providing the username, password, and computer name filter. Then click Browse and the discovered nodes are displayed. To add nodes, you have to select the nodes and verify. To verify, select the nodes, enter the username and password, and then click Apply. The credentials are verified. Each node must be verified before you can add to the list. A green check mark is displayed for each verified node. If a node fails verification, then you'll have to re-enter the credentials and click Apply again. Then click Add to List. The selected node is added to the right pane, then click Next and the nodes are added to the plan. Use the Add Nodes by vCenter ESX method to add virtual machine nodes from a VMware vCenter ESX server. Here, you'll need to enter the host name, IP address, port, protocol, username, and password to discover and import the nodes from the vCenter ESX server, and then click Connect. The discovered host names are displayed. Expand the host name to view the nodes. Select the nodes you want to add, and then click Add to List. The selected nodes are added to the right pane. Click Next, and the nodes are added to the plan. Use the Add Hyper-V Nodes method to import the virtual machine nodes from a Microsoft Hyper-V server. Here, you'll need to enter the hostname IP address, username, and password then click Connect. The discovered host names are displayed. Expand the host name to view the nodes. Select the nodes you want to add to the plan and click Add to List. The selected nodes are added to the right pane. Click Next and the nodes are added to the plan. The Backup Schedule dialog then opens. From this screen, specify the date and time to perform the install or upgrade and the required reboot. You can also specify when to perform the next daily incremental backup then click Next. The Plan Confirmation dialog opens. From here, you can review the details of your plan. If necessary, you can edit the nodes or the schedule by clicking Edit Nodes or Edit Schedule, or you can add or delete a plan. To edit nodes, click Edit Nodes, and the method you selected opens. 
Select the node you want to edit from the nodes protected by plan list, apply your edits, and then click save and return to plan confirmation. If you decide not to make any edits to the node, then click cancel plan edit. To edit schedule, click edit schedule and the backup schedule dialog opens. Make your changes and click save and return to plan confirmation. Or if you decided not to make any edits, then click cancel plan edit. The plan confirmation dialog opens. After you are satisfied that the plans are correct, click next. The next steps dialog opens. Now you have successfully completed the configuration and you're now ready to work in the ArcServe UDP console. You'll be able to add more nodes to protect, customize plans with features such as virtual standby, and add more destinations by including recovery point servers and data stores. Now click finish to exit the wizard. And the ArcServe UDP console opens at the dashboard tab. That's it. Thanks for watching. This concludes our video. For more information on the features and benefits of this appliance, please read the ArcServe UDP Appliance User Guide or visit the ArcServe Unified Data Protection Knowledge Center.